The recent patch 1.2 has changed a lot in Bannerlord, which can mean only one thing. Time to update all the guides. Making money is one of the most important topics, so we'll tackle that in this video, covering the 6 best ways to earn dinars. Let's get right to it. Caravans are the most reliable passive income in the game. The biggest issue with having a profitable caravan is getting caught by bandits or enemies and losing the initial investment. There are a number of skills to help caravans. Tactics allows our caravan to take on larger enemy parties. Medicine reduces friendly casualties from battle, and less troop losses means less expenses on replacement troops. Trade reduces the trade penalty for both the buy and the sell side for each transaction, which increases our caravan's profit margins. Riding and scouting also both increase a caravan's average daily profit, although it's not entirely clear what mechanic is behind it. No, Terrell's no, Mathematics. No, no. So a good companion to lead a caravan will have levels in some of these areas. As with Flisson's previous tests, there is no magic trick to sending out caravans. It doesn't matter which town you send them from or which notable you use to create it. Simply send a companion out and reap the rewards. While it's difficult to say an exact number that caravans will make since daily profits can vary from 0 to 500 or more, over the course of several years they will end up making around 225 dinars per day. A couple notes of caution when setting up caravans though. The early game economy is wild and generally not profitable, so wait until around day 200 to start your first caravan for the best chance of making money. Wars are the biggest killer of caravan profits. Not only can enemies capture and destroy a caravan, but it also limits the viable trading targets on the map. For this reason, it's generally not recommended to run caravans if you plan on becoming a mercenary or vassal in the near future. Even if you're not at war with a major faction, your kingdom could be at war with minor factions, which love to pick on lonely caravans. Next up, beefs. They can be one of the best money makers in the game, depending on prosperity, building upgrades, governor perks, and how much of a garrison we keep. A good thief can easily make 1-4 to 4, thousand dinars per day provided it's not on the front lines and getting sieged or raided constantly. Both towns and castles can earn income by converting 35% of its prosperity into dinars, as well as income from bound villages. Towns can also earn tariffs depending on how many caravans pass through for trade. One thing to keep in mind, castles generally make less profit than towns because their prosperity is capped around 2,000, while most towns can easily reach 5,000 with some towns even going above 10,000, a difference of nearly 5 times. Towns and castles both have a building that increases tax income, and castles have a building that can reduce the cost of the garrison, both important for increasing the bottom line. Governor Perks and Builds is an entirely separate video on its own, but here are a couple sample builds that can drastically increase the income of your fiefs. The first maximizes tax income, while the second one decreases the garrison cost significantly, both increasing your bottom line. Fighting is the most obvious way to make money in Bannerlord. When we win a battle, we'll get access to a certain percentage of the enemy's gear as loot, which can then be sold to towns and villages. There are two ways to increase the amount of loot earned from battle. Getting a high percentage of enemy kills and increasing our roguery skill. At the end of battle, we get a share of the battle loot based on how many kills our troops got relative to the number of kills the allied troops got. If we're the only participant in the battle, we get 100% of the loot. If we get 50% of the kills, we get only 50% of the loot, and so on. If earning loot is the main priority when it comes to fighting, it pays to win big battles as a solo army using only your own troops. We can also increase our loot gain by increasing the roguery skill. For every 4 skill points gained, we earn an extra 1% loot. At level 100, we earn an extra 25%, and at 300, an extra 75%. Over the course of a campaign, this extra loot can add up and be sold for millions of dinars. As a quick bonus, we're including two more perks that can increase the bottom line with minimal investment. Level 25 trade perk appraiser will decrease the trade penalty for selling equipment, which equates to an increase of more than 10% to the bottom line. A single focus point into trade on your main character is all that's needed here. And lastly, level 125 medicine perk veterinarian. This perk gives a chance to recover lamed horses after battle, allowing us to use them as upgrades for elite cavalry or sell them for a profit. If you've won tournaments with mounts as a prize, you'll know how valuable this can be. And finally, we tested a battle against an army of 800 with all of these perks and was able to earn 62,000 dinars in profit. 
There is a bit of RNG involved here as to what loot will be dropped, but with a little bit of luck, you'll get a piece of the enemy noble's gear drop which can sell for upwards of 20,000 dinars each. The next method for making money is joining a kingdom as a mercenary. In order to qualify, we need to be at least clan tier 1, and the kingdom we want to join must be at war with another major faction. Minor factions don't qualify. As a mercenary, you'll earn a daily payment of dinars based on how much influence you have at the daily tick. On the high end, we can make upwards of 5 to 10,000 dinars per day from a mercenary contract. The main way to earn influence is from battle, which, as we've covered, will earn money from selling loot and prisoners as well. It's like double dipping. And to top it all off, if you're ever in an impossible situation, you can leave the kingdom by ending your contract and avoid certain destruction. There's no relations lost from this, and the only downside is losing the payments from the influence you have saved up. You can then retreat back to friendly territory and join as a mercenary with the same kingdom once again. When it comes to maximizing our mercenary contract, there are three things we can do. Taking level 50 Charm Perk Warlord will increase influence for each battle by 30%. This is a straight 30% increase to mercenary contract income, and at level 50, only a single focus point is needed to get it. For a Charm Heavy build, getting to level 275 will get an extra 5 influence per day. Most contracts pay around 200 dinars per influence or 1000 dinars per day with no extra work needed. And finally, if you're feeling like a spineless coward, you can play as one of Durthurt's bastard children and pick a Vlandian culture start which gives a 15% bonus to mercenary contract payments. Pairing this with the level 50 warlord, we can be earning almost 50% more income from a mercenary contract for the exact same amount of work. And finally, for the granddaddy of all money making, smithing. Tailworlds tried to nerf smithing for years now, but it's the single best way to earn money in the game. No debate, no questions asked. It's still incredibly easy to unlock top tier parts in important categories like two-handed sword and polearm within a few months from the start. The fastest unlocking method is to craft the most expensive weapon in the category you're interested in, then smelt it down and repeat. Be sure to use more expensive parts as they unlock. Once you've got some decent tier 4 parts unlocked, you can transition into money printer mode, traveling from town to town to collect Pugio and throwing daggers, smelting them down for materials, making 200 swords or polearms that can sell for 60,000 dinars or more each. One of the biggest factors for how much a weapon will sell for are the modifiers it has. For example, this cracked polearm is worth only 6,000 dinars, but the exact same weapon with the legendary modifier will fetch 35,000 dinars. That's more than 5 times more for the exact same weapon. So make sure you have enough smithing skill to complete top tier weapons and pick up perks that will give you positive modifiers. And if spamming weapons for sale wasn't enough, we can also complete crafting orders for big profit. Some even granting upwards of 100,000 dinars or more for a single craft. Crafting orders can change from town to town, so be sure to check each one that you visit. I know that was all six, but there's one more important thing that we should go over. Workshops. They used to be the king of passive income in previous patches, but recently they've taken a turn for the worse. Some workshops are still viable with a little luck, but overall the results are too random to recommend them. Flasan has spent dozens of hours trying to make a patch 1.2 workshop guide, but it's simply not possible to do and it's best to avoid workshops altogether when it comes to making money. They can still be useful for earning renown with the level 125 trade perk artisan community and for stocking up on food that can be hard to find in the late game like beer, but otherwise avoid these. And that's the 6 best ways to make money in Bannerlord. Let us know in the comments if you want to see any of these topics covered in more detail for a future video. Flasan and I are both working on Bannerlord guides once again, so you can expect more videos moving forward. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you on the next one. To unlock top tier ports, 